I'm shook that this study was even ethical. Here's why you should be drinking raw milk over pasteurized milk. Oh my God! Not this again, honestly. Mansplaining incorrectly the science. We're not surprised. If you're eating plants all day and you don't have the microbiome, the bacteria to digest certain things or transform certain things, then you're going to end up with a ton of problems. If you're going to go attack an animal because you want to eat some meat, that animal is going to protect itself by trying to fight back. But plants don't have those fighting back capabilities, so they have toxins that they release into your body, poison, basically to protect themselves. And I know many people, many, many people that have um, oh, yeah. developed autoimmune from, from that diet. Oh my God, this is why people are so confused. And it really just is, I think, a lack of basic understanding of the physiology that we have. It's not that these plants are just toxic and trying to give us autoimmune disease. It's that we need to be able to properly cook them, process them, remove some of these compounds beforehand, and then secondarily, make sure that we have great gut health so that way our gut microbes are breaking down, digesting, and absorbing. But it wasn't the plant's fault. Here's why you should be drinking raw milk over pasteurized milk. Now, it's funny to me how people think they're being healthier by drinking skimmed or semi-skimmed milk, but that couldn't be further from the truth. You want all that good, healthy fat, which is exactly what raw milk contains. It also contains all the healthy enzymes and microbes, plus good bacteria to help support the gut microbiome. Plus, you'll be supporting local farmers and keeping old school traditions alive and well. So if you have access to it, get yourself down to a local farm and grab yourself some proper milk. Cheers. Interesting. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. <laughs> school tradition. Cow milk is cow breast milk that is there to transfer to the baby calf's gut microbiome. Humans are designed to digest milk, their mother's milk, and it's only for a short period of time, mm -hmm. right? So that's the milk you should be drinking. Your child needs meat to develop a healthy brain. There was a randomized controlled trial where researchers took Kenyan children, divided them into four groups, and fed them each a different diet. The first group stayed on their normal diet. The second group just received a bowl of porridge. The third group received a bowl of porridge and a glass of milk. And the fourth group received a bowl of porridge with ground beef. Each diet contained the same amount of calories and the experiment lasted for two years. And the results were shocking. Researchers found that the kids who received ground beef outperformed all the other groups in every single measurable category. They showed better mental health, they had fewer health problems, gained more muscle mass, had greater confidence on the playground, and performed better on tests in school. Essentially, all the things that make a healthy and happy kid. So why did the children who ate meat develop healthier brains? The researchers concluded by saying that it's because of creatine, protein, and many bioavailable nutrients that you can only find in animal foods. Meat has been in our diet for a millennia, and a lot of anthropologists believe that cooking meat and organs is actually what led to our bigger brain sizes in the first place. Ugh, not this again, honestly. This is literally the same thing every single time, every video I see. I mean, it's another video of a bro out in nature mansplaining incorrectly the science. We're not surprised. Like, are you only feeding these children porridge meal after meal for two years? Like, I want to send them a multivitamin. So like, like, I'm worried about these kids. And yeah, I do want to find this study because again, it's study design is key, right? If, if you are... If you do have this divisive control group and it looks like you're you're factoring in everything, but you're really not, the study will go in your favor and you can tout all these claims and put all these headlines out with a poorly designed study. And we see this all the time. When you cut animal proteins out of the diet, you are automatically protein deficient because plant-based proteins simply don't work as well as animal protein. And it's not okay to say 100 grams of beef or whey or something is the same as 100 grams of gluten or soy protein or whatever other protein, pea protein that you think is food, they don't do the same thing in the body. If you were to eat that many peas, you'd throw up. So you can't do that. So you industrially process them, but you still need probably twice as much pea protein as animal protein because it doesn't absorb as well. So you can do 200 grams of beef protein or 400 grams of pea protein, there's just a tolerability limit to it. It doesn't work. So creating malnutrition as a longevity strategy, i.e. the vegan diet, is a bad idea. Wow. Oh, good old Dave. There's no science to say you need to eat double the amount of plant proteins. If you're worried about it, go for high protein plant foods. Like no one's saying eat brown rice as your protein source. Get in tempeh, get in high protein tofu, get in 
I, I'm not opposed to a protein powder. I love my pumpkin seed protein powder. It's delicious and it helps me get in more protein, get in soy milk, like get in these high ticket items like legume pasta. If you're eating those items with your plant foods, you're getting great amounts of amino acids. You're getting all the essential amino acids.